Hello everybody, this is Solar Tiger with another solar power video. Today is the 25th of December 2019, i.e. it is Christmas Day. So I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone watching a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So outside it's been sunny today and my solar panels are outside, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Now you'll remember that I previously had the EP Solar Tracer 3215BN charge controller, the big metal one that used to be here, but I have now bought a new charge controller. I've decided to buy one of a well-known brand that has more features and this is the one that I've got. It's the Victron Energy Smart Solar Charge Controller, the MPPT 1 slash 100 slash 20. It's a 20 amp MPPT solar charge controller. And this is it here. Now, it came in this box, the Smart Solar MPPT. It's made by Victron Energy and it comes in the plastic colours coloured box of blue and orange as all Victron products do. So I'll run down what it says on the box. So this is a 12 or 24 volt charge controller. It can work on either. It has a rated Charging current of 20 amps, a nominal PV power of 290 watts on 12 volts, or 580 watts on 24 volts. The maximum PV current is 20 amps. The maximum PV open circuit voltage is 100 volts. Uh, the controller has a peak efficiency of 98% and the self current consumption of 10 milliamps. The charging voltages are as follows. Absorption is 14.4 volts or 28.8 volts, depending if you have a 12 or 24 volt system. And the float voltage is 13.8 volts or 27.6 volts. Continuous peak current of the controller is 20 amps, but will will stand short term peaks of up to 50 amps. So this is the Victron Energy Smart Solar MPPT 100 slash 20. The controller is designed in the Netherlands but the product is manufactured in India. Unlike most charge controllers that I've had in the past that were manufactured in China and this controller is smart because it has Bluetooth built in. Victron do make a similar model, the Blue Solar MPPT, which is basically the same controller but without the Bluetooth. If you want the Bluetooth with that model, you have to buy a Bluetooth dongle to plug into it, which costs more money. So I went with this. Victron also offer you a five year guarantee, which you don't get with the Chinese ones, so they must be confident of the quality of their products. So I like that. And there's some features on the back that says ultra fast maximum power point tracking. This controller has a load output. I'll come back to that later. It also has an automatic load disconnect, a battery life feature that is intelligent battery management, programmable battery charge algorithm, day and night timing and light dimming option, programming, real time data and history display options, and Bluetooth Smart built in. And as I said, a dongle is not required for this device. I went with this one. My previous controller was a 30 amp one, 
that if I bought a 30 amp version of this, one, it is quite a bit more expensive, and two, it doesn't feature a load output. I'd have to wire all my loads directly to my battery, and my setup was set up in, with a controller that had a load output. So I went with this one. This one costs a hundred and forty pounds. I bought it on eBay from a company called Gecko Energy and they have an eBay shop on eBay and they had a deal on this which is still on at the moment. They have 20% off so the £140 includes the discount and free next day shipping and this offer is available to the 31st of December 2019 so I ordered this on Sunday and it turned up on Tuesday morning, delivered by UPS free of charge. So that's the deal I, I got with this. So inside the box you get the controller, which is over there, and you get a printed instruction manual. But I had already downloaded the manual and read it before I bought this item. I will just dispense with the box and the instructions and we will go to the controller so this is the controller there is no display on this just like there was not on the tracer that I had before there are three LEDs on the front the one at the bottom shows that what shows that it's in bulk charge mode, the middle one shows it's in absorption mode and the top one shows it's in float mode. There are three sets of terminals and the layer of the terminals is different to every other charge controller that I've had before. Normally you'd have PV, battery and load, whereas in this case you have battery, PV and the load. Also that you have to, to observe the polarity as they are on different sides on different of the terminals so you need to play, pay close attention to that. The terminals themselves you can see the terminal block is green under there. There's a VE direct port on the left and there's a 25 amp fuse. The fuse is easy to get at if you need to replace it. So that's a good thing, you don't have to take the controller to bits to change the fuse. So the terminals can take 6 millimeter squared cable and whereas my tracer could take up to 16 millimeter cable that I had before, so I had to change some of my wiring because it would not fit in the terminal block. So this is a 20 amp controller and my previous one was a 30. But also there is a big difference in size. My tracer was quite big. If you see these holes here, here and at the top, the old controller took up the whole space whereas this 20 amp one is quite a bit smaller that gives me a space at the top here that I may use in future for some other devices so the controller is wired up the same way as the tracer was where I had things looped into it like the timer and the wind charger system uh, we are only concentrating on this today. So this is the Smart Solar Charge Controller. And one of the reasons I bought this is because it has Bluetooth built in. I can monitor the device wirelessly with my iPod or iPad. I don't have to have anything physically plugged into it. So I could monitor this device from anywhere in the house which is a good thing. Also, the 
you can have it so that you can monitor it over the internet but I'm still learning about that so that'll be something for later so Victron are a well-known company and they're very reliable and a lot of people use their products they're pro professional quality and yes they cost more money but they are good quality and you get a five-year guarantee so those are things that you don't get with the cheaper Chinese ones so and this device is more programmable but we come into that in a moment so I will say my solar panels are outside and at the moment only one 100 watt panel is hooked up because I've had to re-angle the solar panels at this time of year the sun goes over there and it kind of sets over there whereas in the summer the sun goes all the way around and it sets over there and because my panels are flat on the shed they tend to favour the summer so that's what's going on out there so today I've only had one 100 watt panel hooked up a 12 watt panel so we will come to the iPad. You can monitor the device over Bluetooth from a smart device. I have an iPad and I've monitored this on my iPod Touch 6. You can monitor this on your phone. You can get apps for iOS and Android. You can monitor the device on your computer but you have to plug it in via a cable, a VE direct to USB cable to plug it into your computer. So I have an iPad and I can do it wirelessly over Bluetooth, which is one of the reasons why I bought it. So this is the iPad app and it shows you the wattage coming in from the solar panel. It's currently zero because you can see that it's in the evening and there's no sun so you have the status this is a live status you can see the voltage of the solar panel is 12.51 volts the current from the solar panel is zero and then there's a battery section the voltage of my battery bank is 12.73 volts the current says minus 0.8 amps because I am running devices from the load output. If you're running devices and drawing current you'll see a negative value and if you are charging the battery, i.e. the sun shining, you will have a positive value. Okay. If we go down, we can see that the load is on and we are drawing 0.8 amps to the devices I'm powering at the moment. In this section, we have a history section and it tells you how much power you've generated each day for the last 30 days. So you have a history of 30 days. This is the first day I've had it on because I installed it last night and you can see that today I brought in 160 watt hours you can tap on this bar for more information and it tells you how long the control has been in each mode today I spent seven and a half hours in bulk mode so 100% of the time was in bulk mode. That's what we got there. If you go on the uh, I, iOS app, the more up-to-date one that's on my other I, iOS device, it shows you the amount of power, voltage and so on. It goes into more detail with that.
you can export the details as well. So that's what I've got. So the newer version of the app shows you more details. So if you go up to, to the settings section, there's a section for the battery. You can see that I have a 12 volt battery. I'm using the maximum charging capacity of the controller. You can you can change you can reduce this if you need to, if you have a reason for that. You can cut down the output. You can also turn the controller off if you want to work on the system. There are settings for the battery. I have AGM batteries. The AGM sealed deep cycle batteries. I have three 100 amp hour batteries. So I have chosen the AGM spiral cell setting. If you touch on it, you can you can make your own settings, or you can select other settings. I have AGM batteries, so the absorption voltage is set at 14.7. The maximum absorption time is 6 hours. The float voltage is 13.8 volts. It shows an equalization voltage, but the automatic equalization is disabled because of the type of battery I got. You can equalize manually if you want to. The temperature compensation is set at minus 16.2 millivolts per degree centigrade and the low temperature cutout is disabled but this setting you need if you are using lithium ion batteries, lithium ion phosphate batteries because you can't charge them below zero degree centigrade otherwise they get damaged. So if we go back, the load output, there are different options for the load output. The default is battery life, it, length, it prolongs the life of your battery by making sure that it doesn't get over discharged. Uh, this controller has a street light function, if you're controlling the lighting with it, but I'm not. Then there's some other functions that i yet to read about. This VE smart networking thing is if you have other Bluetooth Victron devices like the, the uh, BM712 battery monitor then you can create a network and the devices can communicate with each other and share information which might be useful but at the moment I only have the one device so that's how that works I'm still learning, well I've only had the, the device for one day and from what I read on the internet it offers lots of potential so this is Solar Tiger with a introduction and first thoughts video of the Victron Energy Smart Solar MPPT 100-20-20 solar charge controller with the built-in Bluetooth. So if you like this video click like and leave a comment below and I will see you in another video so this is Solar Tiger saying thank you for watching and until next time goodbye thank you